Hello, my name is Kendra Winchester and welcome back to my channel. Uh, today, June 19th, 2019, is Mrs. Dalloway Day. So if you don't know what Mrs. Dalloway Day is, it's the day in Mrs. Dalloway by Virginia Woolf. It's the day that Clarissa is wandering around London and the whole novel is set in a single day. Now in the book it just says a Wednesday in the middle of June. So after years of arguing, uh, all the different Virginia Woolf groups, I don't know, finally decided that the third Wednesday in June would always be Mrs. Dalloway Day. So the date shifts, but it's always the third Wednesday. So this year it's the 19th. If you're in London, you can go take a walking tour to see where Clarissa Dalloway like walked around London. Uh, different groups are celebrating on the weekends, like bookending Mrs. Dalloway Day. Uh, but today, for my celebration of Mrs. Dalloway Day, I'm going to be sharing my Virginia Woolf book collection. So this has been requested for a while, uh, but Virginia Woolf is my favorite author. Many of you already know this. I've been talking about Virginia Woolf pretty much as long as I've had this channel, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> so I've already done a Virginia Woolf spotlight and last year I did a Mrs. Dalloway read along. So I will link that playlist down in the description box so you can go check all of that out as you so desire. So we're gonna start with the books that aren't part of a set or a group or whatever. Uh, they're kind of just single books by Virginia that I have collected over time. So first up is one of my more recent acquisitions and that is, it's a little shiny, here we go, um, is uh, the letters of Vita Sackville West and Virginia Woolf. Uh, they were together for a while and Virginia's husband Leonard and she had this understanding and there's now a movie called Vita and Virginia. So these are the letters that that movie is based on. I haven't read it yet, but I'm very much looking forward to. I haven't actually read too many of uh, Virginia Woolf's letters, so it's definitely something I want to get into. Uh, this next one is a library sale find that's Moments of Being, and this is just an essay collection. Uh, this is not part of a set that I own. I might switch it out for something. I don't really feel like I need multiple copies of this particular book since it's not one of my favorites, but um, this is the little copy I have at the moment. Next up is one of my many, many copies of my favorite Virginia Woolf book, A Room of One's Own. This is a hardback edition with the classic portrait of Virginia, really super zoomed in on there. But uh. <laughs> well, some of Virginia Woolf's books are public domain because they were published before like the cutoff date here in America. So this one is a public domain one. That's Virginia Woolf, uh, her novel Jacob's Room, where she really started to experiment with her stream of consciousness style. This is out from Oxford World Classics. I want the one that matches my bigger set, and I will find it one day, but this is the one I used in grad school. So now we're moving on to the sets that I have. So first up is what the oldest matching set I have, um, and that is the Harcourt, uh, what is the other one? Harcourt and Brace editions. Uh, so this is my very first copy of A Room of One's Own. It has all of my notes in it. And then I found my two favorite novel novels of Virginia Woolf's, uh, To the Lighthouse and Mrs. Dalloway. Mrs. Dalloway being my favorite and of course the one that Mrs. Dalloway Day is based on. Uh, but aren't they just, they're just so hideous. They're so hideous. Oh my goodness. I'm so glad they fixed that. Okay, so next is my favorite set of Virginia Woolf books that I ordered from the UK um, and it was given to me by my in-laws. Um, and that is this vintage set that was came out a few years ago. Uh, so I'll go through them for you. Oh, they're really heavy actually. <laughs> Um, all right, so first up is, is Orlando and you can see like on the inside they have this pattern, French flaps, gorgeous books, just uh, gorgeous. So this is our Orlando. You have To the Lighthouse. You can see the themes going on. Gorgeous French flaps. And then the back. Ugh. These are just beautiful. Mrs. Dalloway. Love it. I mean, it just, they got the theme right. It's just, they're just so gorgeous. Our Room of One's Own. I think Three Guineas is also in here, actually. The Years, which I have not read, but I will at some point and The Waves, which I have read once, but you can see they really, ugh. But I mean, it's just a gorgeous collection. It, it goes downstairs on my like collected uh, matching editions of my favorite authors. So I have this one, Maggie O'Farrell and Desmond Ward downstairs and Miriam Taves' Vintage Canada uh, editions are gonna go down there fairly soon. But uh, I love these. These are the non-reading copies. I will not read these editions because we will get to the next set, but that is, those are the editions that I read, but 
Oh, they're just so beautiful. One of the things that I think is important to note when you look at Virginia Wolf editions is whether or not they have the original type setting. So for example, this is a room of one's own. This has the original type setting and you can see, so if you have the original type setting, the same words will be on the same page and it's the original one so that it, it appeared as it did in the original edition. This version of our room one's own is obviously a different size. And so it's a new type setting with new fonts, new sizes, new spacing, everything. And for me, I prefer to read the original type setting just because it's the original, um, but these are very beautiful. And most people do not care about original type settings, but I'm, I'm Kendra, so <laughs> that's the, that's the only explanation I have. I don't know. I'm a publishing nerd. Okay. So the next set, hold on. Let me see if I can show you this set all at once. So this is the set of Virginia Woolf that I'm about to show you. Um, I'm gonna set these down before my wrists break off. <laughs> okay, so these editions that have this spine are the Harcourt editions. Um, recently, they've reissued some of the main uh, works of Virginia Woolf's, but this is, the in the US, the most extensive collection of Virginia Woolf uh, works that I'm aware of, and you will find out why here pretty quickly. I don't own all of them, but whenever I go to used bookstores, I look for them. So oftentimes I'll take books to the used bookstore, get credit, and find more Virginia Woolf books, as in the case. This one um, is from McKay's, and this is A Room of One's Own. And uh, I think this is the one you'll get if you order it from Amazon now. I'm not sure if uh, this cover was reissued or not with all of the other ones, but um, yeah, this is the Harcourt edition. So this is Three Guineas, which is more nonfiction um, discussion about uh, class and, and being a woman. It kind of follows on the coattails of A Room of One's Own. I don't think it's as good as A Room of One's Own, but uh, that's why they're, I guess, typically bound up together, as you saw in the vintage edition. This is uh, Virginia Woolf's A Common Reader. There's also a second common reader. These are just essays that she's written that were bound up together and then printed. Uh, this is Women in Writing, my most recent acquisition. I got this at The Strand. This is just more essays on women and on writing. I mean, like it says on the tin. So this is Between the Acts. I haven't read this. This is her last novel. It's, it hasn't been very well received, but uh, she died shortly before or shortly after this was published. So I, I don't think it was as finished as she probably would have liked it to have been, but um, this is the last one that she wrote. Uh, before Between the Acts was The Years. I haven't read this one. Um, it also wasn't her best novel. Uh, the critics really weren't a big fan of this, but I still would like to read it because she wrote it. And I'd be interested to see like where she went after the waves. Uh, which was, which was this one. Um, I read a, something in her biography that Quentin Bell wrote that she was really upset about this book and that it was just so painful for her to write and she didn't want to publish it, but she just needed to get it out of her system and that Leonard didn't really want to tell her that it really wasn't that good because mentally she wasn't in a great place. So I'm kind of interested to see like what kind of book that that was. Uh, the next two books are my two favorites of hers, like I've mentioned. So this is To the Lighthouse. It has all my notes from grad school in it because I wrote on this one. And then this is Mrs. Dalloway. This is the one I used for my Mrs. Dalloway read-along. It has all of my notes. And then every time I reread it, I take notes in a different pen color. So I would probably drive someone a little, a little wild if they tried to read this. But um, I think that these particular books, like these specific ones are just so important to me because I do love annotating and I'd love seeing what like past Kendra wrote the last time she read this book. So they are very special to me. So here's The Waves. I read this book in grad school, but I listened to it on the audio and I didn't write about it. So I just read it once and I knew the basic gist of it. I want to reread it uh, because this is her most, I think, experimental novel. And it really shows like how far she really wanted to take her style. And it's a very important novel of hers. This one, Into the Lighthouse, there's argument about which one is her best novel. And I think it just depends on what your style or prose style preference is. I think they both are very just, they're both brilliant, so I, I think there's an argument either way, but um, yeah. This one is also, you know, Eric, at Eric, the Lonesome Reader, this is his favorite. So I do feel like I need to reread this just so we can talk about it again at some point, because I haven't read this book in like five years, so it is time. All right, so this is Orlando, and this was uh, partially based on Vita Sackville West. That was really, I guess, the inspiration for this book, and I read this book, and it 
was just so fascinating. And the story goes that this person, Orlando, he's living his life, and then one, he, he's immortal, basically. He never ages or dies or whatever. So he's living his life through the centuries, then one day he wakes up and Orlando, she's a woman. And then she lives about her life, and it just points out, like, you can be the same person, but you'd be truly different if you were a man versus if you were a woman. And what she does with gender is really interesting with this. Also, there's like Virginia's ideal marital relationship in this book. It's so intriguing. If you haven't read Orlando, go check it out. It's fabulous. And Virginia Woolf is really funny. I don't think we typically think of Virginia Woolf as funny, but this one is, it's hilarious. It's just so good. So her very first book, A Voyage Out, is actually one I don't own. And that is something that I want to pick up so that it matches. But I didn't end up picking up um, Night and Day, which is her second novel. Um, this was written in a more traditional style. It was before Virginia Woolf really came into her own with, a Jacob, with Jacob's Room. Uh, but I really want to read this just so I can, you know, I'm a completionist. I, I want to read all of her major uh, books. Um, but yeah, I've I had a friend who read this and she enjoyed it, but it was definitely not as good as her other books. Uh, but it does match the rest of them, so that's pretty cool. This one also still has a sticker on it for whatever reason. Um, this is A Haunted House. This is a short story collection. She did write some short stories, but I think her short stories are just interesting to see where her mind goes. And yeah, it's so interesting. Speaking of short stories, Mrs. Dalloway actually started as a short story, which is in here, and this is the Mrs. Dalloway Reader. Uh, this is edited by Francine Prose, so it includes some critical essays. Uh, so you can read Mrs. Dalloway's Party, and then read Mrs. Dalloway, and you can see the thought process. She does actually change some details from Mrs. the short story original idea to the novel. So I did find that very interesting to try out, especially since Mrs. Dalloway is my favorite novel of Virginia Woolf's. I don't think it's her best novel, but for me personally, my affection for it is is the greatest. I loved reading this, and Francine Prose is brilliant. If you haven't read Francine Prose, you definitely should check it out. Okay, so those are all of my Virginia Woolf books. I didn't include Virginia Woolf inspired books or Virginia Woolf like retellings or any like there's this memoir that I just finished about this woman ruminating on to the lighthouse during her own time of grief and all this stuff. I didn't include any of those. These are just the books by Virginia Woolf. So uh, I love them. She is such a glorious place in my heart. And so I hope that you enjoyed seeing these do you own some Virginia Woolf books? Did you own any of these editions? Do you own an edition that I did not mention? I definitely want to know that so I can go find it. Uh, but yeah, tell me all of the things. Happy Mrs. Dalloway Day, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye, guys.